Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on data structures. Now I'm just making this tutorial series because a lot of you guys have been asking for them and what I'm planning to do here is give really quick recaps and summaries of all these different data structures to kind of refresh you and just teach you the underlying concepts. I'm not going to be implementing all of these or going into crazy details. I'm hoping just to keep these videos short and explain with as much detail as necessary what these structures are and how they work. So without further ado, let's get started talking about queues. Now, what is a queue? Well, chances are you have probably been in a queue before or heard of a queue. Now, the most basic example of a queue is something like a line. So let's say we have three blobs down here and they're waiting in line to go to the cash. Let's say maybe they're at a store, there's one cash and they're waiting to buy some items. So like a grocery store or something like that. Now, the way that we know a line works is the first blob in line will be the first person to get served by the cashier, and then the second blob will be the second, the third will be the third, and so on until there's no more people left in the line. So we have blob number one, he is the first one to get served by the cash, and then he will be the first one to leave the line. So this follows the principle known as FIFO, and this is first in first out, meaning the first person in the queue is the first person out. And in this case, when we're talking computer science, be the first item in the queue is the first item out. So we're prioritizing the people or the items or whatever it is, they came first. And that is all there is to know about a queue. Now I'm going to go and talk about all these methods that I have on the left side here and how they're used to manipulate a queue, add items, remove items. But again, it's very straightforward. So our queue has what's known as a front and a back. And when you first come into the queue, you come in from the back side. Now, this is the exact same way that a line comes. When you enter a line, you come in from the back side. Then you go behind all the other people that are closer to the front. And eventually, once you get to the end, it's your turn. And then you get to do whatever it is that you want to do. Very basic. That's what I need to mention there. So if we want to add an item to our queue, regardless of if it's full or not, all we have to do is use one of the methods on this side, which is on queue or push. Now this stands for add an item to the queue. Now I'm just going to write push, but again, these methods mean the same thing. It's just sometimes they're different names based on what language you're using or the way you're implementing it. But I'm going to push the item one onto our queue. So if I do that and I push the item one, what happens is one will come in from the back of our queue and it will go to as far as it can. So in this case, it's going to go right to the front and we're going to put one inside of our queue. Now let's push another item onto our queue and see how that works. So let's change the color here. If I go ahead and push now the item, let's say four onto our queue. Well, the exact same thing happens. It comes in from the back side, and then we see it here as four. Now let's move on to the next methods, DQ or pop. Now you can probably guess what this does, but this is what removes an item from our queue. So this will remove it from the front of our queue. So the first item that was in will be the first item to be removed. So if I go ahead and use pop, so DQ or pop, again, the same thing, what will happen is one will be removed from our queue and passed to or returned to wherever we called pop. So we said something like X equals pop, we're calling pop on our queue. What happens is X is actually going to be given the value of one because that was the item that was at the front of our queue. Now, what actually happens is inside of our queue, that item is removed as well. So when we call pop, one will be removed. And now four is the very front of our queue. And the next time we call pop, we will get four. That is all there is to adding and removing items from the queue. Now, sometimes you want to look at the first item in the queue without removing it. And you actually want to do this quite often. So in that case, we use the method peak or front. Again, they mean the same thing, just whatever one you prefer to write. So in this case, I'll write front. And if I do front, what happens is we will be given the value of four here. So four will be right there, but we're not actually going to remove it from the queue. And that's as simple as, as it is to it. So four will stay in there, but we'll be seen four and we'll be given four. And if I call front again, well, we're going to see four one more time because again, we didn't remove it from the queue. So you can't actually look more than one item back in the queue. You would have to pop off items until you get to whatever item that is. So that's something to note that you can't access any of the middle or end items of the queue. You can only look at the front of the queue and add items to the back of the queue. And that is the restriction of it. But that's also one of the reasons that we use it. Now, let's just remove these for one second and let's show the last method, which is is empty. Now, if you try to remove uh, an item from a queue and that queue is empty, you're going to run into some errors. So let's just erase this right now. So let's say we have an empty queue and let's just not call pop or front anymore. 
Uh, so let's get rid of all this. So let's say we have an empty queue and we want to pop off the front item of the queue. So if we try calling front like this, or we call, yeah, we can try front or we can even try pop. If we try to do one of those and there's nothing in our queue, we're going to run into an error. So we need to first check if our queue is empty using the is empty method. So what we typically do is we say if not is empty like that, then we can go ahead and do whatever operation we wanted to do. So in this case, maybe we pop off the front item of the queue or maybe we add another item or whatever it is. But we need to check before we try to do either a pop or front operation if the queue is empty. Otherwise, we're going to run into issues. So the last thing here to mention about queues is the time complexity of these operations. So this is one of the reasons we use queues and all of these operations here that I've mentioned run in what's known as constant time. So if you're familiar with big O notation, then you know what that means. But essentially, it doesn't matter how big our queue gets. When we're adding or removing an item from our queue, it will happen as fast as if the queue was empty or if it only had one or two items in it. And that's a very important thing to realize and it's one of the reasons we use these queues. Now, depending on how you implement this queue and write the code, you may actually inadvertently change this um, time complexity. But if you write it properly in the way you're supposed to, then this should be in constant time, which means whenever you're peaking, dequeuing, on queuing, pushing, popping, whatever, checking if the queue is empty, that'll happen in constant time. Now, the last thing as well to talk about here is that there is another method that sometimes is used is called is full. Now, depending on what language and how you implement this queue, you could have a max length on the amount of items in the queue. So it is something worth noting that you may want to check if the queue is full before you decide to add another item to it. Again, that only is dependent on certain languages and certain implementations, but I figured I'd mention it here at the end. So with that being said, that has been it for cues. If you guys enjoyed and are looking forward to the next video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you there.